to the fact that the Sheffield rally helped lose you that election? It's myth. Um, and I can demonstrate it's myth because, first of all, the rally itself was barely reported on the day. Uh, one of the things that made me furious about the rally was not just the fact that uh, by the time I got there, uh, and I was, knew I was going to be late in any case, um, we were marched in from the back triumphantly instead of the agreed policy that I thought of just as presenting ourselves on the stage. Mm. Secondly, Glenda Jackson introduced me as the next Prime Minister, a phrase which I had forbidden. <laughs> and thirdly, the triumphant Hollywood bloody music was everything that I despised. So uh, by the time I got to the stage in this, with 10,000, 11,000 people there in the Sheffield Arena, uh, it was like a blast furnace. And I got up onto the stage and there was this enormous noise. The only noise I've ever heard like it was when I presented the Rugby League Cup in the Principality Stadium uh, and there were 80,000 people in the ground roaring their heads off and uh, I thought how the hell can people play on this pitch when you can't, literally you couldn't hear yourself think and it was like that when I got up on the stage. Anyway, to try and cool it down I did a really stupid thing and that was to try to do what rock and roll and some great jazz musicians do. And that's to say, well, all right. And of course, like bloody idiots, they all shouted back, well, all right. So I tried it again, and they did again. And I thought, oh my God, what am I going to So I said, hey, listen, we better get some talking down here. And uh, it quietened down. It only managed to squeak at nine minutes, at 28 minutes past nine, with John Cole reporting and said he'd never seen anything like it since the JFK nomination. Uh, and that was a very favorable report. No substance in it at all, because I'd got on the stage too bloody late to say anything for the television cameras. So it was a cock up from beginning to end. Anyway, uh, it was barely, it wasn't reported that night. It was barely reported the next day and then it was overtaken by other events in the election. And it wasn't until a fortnight or 10 days after the election that the myth of it was Sheffield that lost it started to develop. There was no polling evidence. I checked uh, with Philip Gould. In so far as it registered at all in the opinion polls, there was a tiny marginal, less than 1% shift in our favor and it had no impact whatsoever on the outcome of the election. Um, so it's complete nonsense. I, in one sense, I wish we could attribute that defeat to uh, that single event, because then I could simply advise subsequent Labour leaders not to do anything like that. <laughs> not that they would, not that they would, but anyway, it had damn all to do with the election defeat it was already lost by then.